Good evening. My name is James K. Holder II. Some of you may know me as Sir James II. I'd like to welcome you back to the Weekend 10, your weekly recap of the week's top 10 stories in 10 minutes. This week has been a bit of a mess, uh, but I am grateful to announce that the Human TV website is now up, and this is where you can find new episodes of all of the original content that I provide uh, that you used to find on my YouTube channel. You'll now find it at human.tv. TV. That's new episodes of The Counter, which started back this Tuesday, and also episodes of Not On My Watch and this series, The Weekend 10. In good news and bad news out of Parkland, Florida this week, uh, one is that Florida as a whole has seen a boost in youth voter registration of 41%. Most of that has to do with or has been credited with the uh, aftermath of the Parkland shooting. Um, so we will see how that fares for the state of Florida and their elections coming in November. Tragically, uh, one of the fathers of a Parkland, two Parkland survivors, um, was actually shot and gunned down uh, today in an armed robbery in which he lost his life. Uh, he was the owner of a store, like a corner store in Florida. And uh, this is Ayub Ali. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing his name. But that happened uh, today, July 20th. So uh, prayers to his family, obviously, just being rocked by gun violence uh, on such a tragic level to face your children and then to have it take the life of uh, your father or the, the head of household, that's just really um, sad. Speaking of gun violence, um, Bernie Sanders will be campaigning against uh, <laughs> Sharice Davids in the Kansas 03 primary. Now, this is a race where Donald Trump and uh, Vice President Mike Pence have both endorsed the uh, GOP rival of this candidate. Bernie Sanders has teamed up with um, Ocasio-Cortez, and I apologize because I don't remember her first name because she actually doesn't have a job yet. Um, and they're stumping against Sharice for some candidate in Kansas. Now, what's interesting is that a lot of people in the resistance uh, are really sort of unnerved by this, right? Because uh, Sharice Davids is actually Native American. She's also a proud member of the LGBTQ community. And so it's kind of like, well, what is your motivation to rally against this person? And also, um, oh, Alexandria Cortez, uh, Ocasio-Cortez. It's interesting that she's campaigning as though she, one, has a job um, or a seat in the House of Representatives. And also, she's campaigning as if she's like a celebrity. It's almost like she's like Cher joining Bernie Sanders, uh, who also loses race after race, and also has his own race to worry about winning this November. Um, I just think it's interesting. And I really wish that Ocasio-Cortez would focus a little more of her time on winning her race. Because you can say what you want about the person that she outseated uh, in uh, their primary in New York, but he has a job now. He won his elections 10 times in a row. And it's sad because if she's out here living the glamorous life and not actually getting those votes secured, we're actually going to lose a seat in the House. And, and be moving in the wrong direction because they're out here showboating. So I just think it's ironic, and I really wish she would chill. I wish Bernie would chill. And another person who should chill is Sean King because he weighed in on it in as much as he basically said that Bernie Sanders would have a great shot at <laughs> going head-to-head -head with Donald Trump in 2020. And based on the fact, let's just move along with stories. This week, Donald Trump, asked one of the members of his team, I can't even keep track of who he asked because they switched, they turned over so quickly in his administration, but someone invited Putin to the White House on behalf of Donald Trump. Now this is after saying right next to Vladimir Putin that he wouldn't see why uh, Russia would have been involved. Then this week, once he got back to the United States said, well, he would see why Russia would have been involved, um, siding eventually with all but 17 intelligence agencies in the United States. A little late to the party, but fine. 
I doubt that Donald Trump will be in the White House when Vladimir Putin arrives in the fall. I hope that he won't be. And one other thing that has surfaced that might contribute to that is the fact that his former attorney, Michael Cohen, has secretly taped uh, Trump <laughs> regarding his payments to Stormy Daniels. So this is all about the denial of paying uh, a former porn star, Stormy Daniels, uh, for hush money, basically, for an affair that she had with Donald Trump. On an unrelated story, Stormy Daniels has actually canceled her appearance here at the Pink Pony uh, Brookhaven location. She was set to appear on Sunday as a part of her Make America Horny Again tour. It's so seedy, it's ridiculous, and that's the non-shenanigans that I'm talking about this week. Um, that I'm actually not talking about because that's not a bullet point. Moving right along to more shenanigans. Uh, Papa John, the bigot, formerly CEO and formerly uh, spokesperson for the uh, disgraced pizza company, um, if you could call that pizza, uh, actually says that he regrets resigning as CEO for his use of the N-word on a conference call. Now, if you could be more ridiculous than not regretting your use of the N-word on a conference call, or at all, um, but then saying that you regret resigning for it because you were immediately pressured by the board to resign and you really didn't think it through and now you want to take it back. You should want to take back your racism and bigotry and all that spongy, soggy pizza that you've been selling for the last couple of decades. Um, get it together. In more firing news, uh, director uh, of Guardians of the Galaxy, I've never seen this movie, but it's a Disney production. Uh, director James Gunn was fired <laughs> over, over <laughs> past tweets. Uh, it's just, this is something that's going to keep on happening. A lot of people are saying that basically the tweets weren't that bad. Um, they were really bad jokes. They were like crass, I'm not going to repeat anything here because they were just really, really poor. They weren't funny, and it was also just really crass. But I, I would advise anybody who is experiencing any kind of shift in your cachet or just uh, internet appeal to just go through. What you do is you go to your Twitter profile, and you go to the search bar. You type in your name, and you type in just eat, one by one, type in every curse word every curse word, every uh, misogynistic term, every swear word, every offensive slur, everything. Type them all in one by one. And when your tweets come up from the last 10 years, just delete them. Because I guarantee you, no one knows that they were there, no one cares that they're there until you make it to a next step, and that's when they're gonna come hunt you down and put you on blast. Uh, we saw it even this past week with uh, Charlemagne the God and his tweets about consent. Um, which I won't go into, but it was featured on the last week's episode of Not On My Watch. Now, speaking of jailbait, Orange is the New Black is finally back. And I'm excited about this. I am not interested in seeing Piper or Alex Voss and their little nasty, raunchy, they got something weird going on. But the last season of Not On My Watch, I mean, not, the last season of Orange is the New Black was amazing. They took a bit of a different format and you saw a lot of things going on. They've really been building up. It's a really transformative series, huge award winner, and it really does celebrate diversity and also women on the screen and in the director's and writer's seats. So I'm excited about this. It will be coming back to Netflix next Friday, July 27th. So you have a week to catch up on past seasons if you haven't watched the show, a week to catch up if you have seen it before and want to be fresh and ready for this next season. I believe this is season five or six. I'm not really sure. But that will be back soon. And if you're looking for something to watch this weekend, you have to tune in to the season finale of Pose. Now, I've been talking about Pose on FX. It's an amazing series. Um, and I'm really sad to see it go away but I'm also very excited that they were already renewed for a second season, as we talked about last week. So make sure to tune in to that episode uh, this weekend. We want to get their ratings as high as possible. Not that I care about ratings, but I think it's important to just support that because it's a very important series. As always, I'd like to ask you to relax, relate, and resist. Thank you.